welcome back today's topic is uh, components of digital relay and its block diagram in the last video lecture we have discussed about the futures of digital relay we have compared the futures of digital relays with the previous generation relays of uh, electromechanical and static relays we have seen that digital relays can perform many functions unlike the electromechanical relays which do perform only a single function and we have already seen that it is very easy to change the function of the digital relay just by programming whereas it is not possible with the previous generation relays and also we have seen the basic structure of a digital relay, what actually the components, the primary components in a digital relay are. We have seen that a digital relay basically consists of an hardware and a software and a relevant algorithm. Now, in this video lecture, we will cover the basic block diagram of digital relay and we will also see the functions of few of the components of digital relay. I hope that by the end of this video lecture, you will be able to describe the block diagram of digital relay and also explain the function of sensing circuits and also surge protection circuits. So I'll start with the block diagram of digital relay and I'll list out the components and then we will move on to discussing about transducers and also surge protection circuits. Moving ahead, we have seen that uh, in electromechanical relay, in our previous semester, we have seen that the power circuits basically they will carry huge amounts of voltage and current. The voltage, current, the power it will be in megavolt amperes, the voltage will be in kilovolts, this will be in kilo amperes. So these are of very high values which normally will be there in the power systems. And we can't measure those high values directly. We don't have the instruments which do directly measure these large values of uh, kilovolts and kilo amperes. So what we do is nothing but we will, let us suppose this is a power system which is carrying some, let us suppose 2000 amperes of current and the voltage drop from here to here is somewhere around 15 kV. Let us suppose this is the scenario. We don't directly measure 2000 amperes or 15 kV directly. Instead, what we do is nothing but we will use an approximate device, a uh, suitable device such that normally we do employ a current transformer and a potential transformers, what we call them as instrument transformers. They will reduce this particular value to some measurable value. Let us suppose if I use a thousand is to one transformer, then this will be reduced to two amperes. So immediately this 2 amperes, I can have a conventional meter, MI or MC, MI meter. So this I can employ for measuring the current. So this is the scenario. Normally I can use a 0 to 5 amperes a meter. So a machine, uh, sorry, an instrument with smaller range is employed here to measure currents of very high values by using suitable devices. Here I have used current transformer. The similar way you can utilize potential transformers also. Normally in power systems we do employ potential transformers and current transformers. So what I mean to say is that despite having very high values in real circuits, these values are reduced in magnitude to some measurable values and these are measured in older generation relays. Nowadays, in digital LS, we will first convert them. Instead of measuring it here, we will convert it into digital form. So digital LS and then this digital form of data is being transmitted and then it is being processed for further information. So the process is very simple. You reduce the magnitude, convert it into digital, and then you process the data. These are the three stages of your digital relay. So once again repeating, reducing the magnitude, 
and then converting from analog to digital format and then you process the data. So based upon that processing of data you will identify whether there is a fault or not. Now let's have a quick uh, look at the block diagram of a digital relay. Now yeah so any digital relay basically consists of three subsystems. The first one is a signal conditioning subsystem. The second one is a conversion subsystem where the data is being converted into analog to digital. Here signal conditioning subsystem we will process the analog signal. So any unwanted things are there in that one we will process here. So analog signal is being processed in signal conditioning system. And next in conversion system we will convert this analog signal to digital signal. And then this digital signal is processed. So digital processing subsystem where digital data is processed. Normally for all of these uh, digital LS, these two are common. The components do not vary for any different type of application. The Only this thing will vary. The processing subsystem will vary depending upon the scheme which you are employing whether it is a differential or a distance protection or overcurrent protection. So all that different schemes that algorithm will be employed here. Here the processing of analog signal and conversion to digital it remains the same for any type of relay. The only thing which varies is how you are going to process that one. So we will see uh, the block diagram here. See this is the block diagram. If you carefully see this is a signal conditioning subsystem. The first one is you will be having a suitable transducer to reduce your high value and next you will use a surge protective circuit. Surge protection circuit in order to provide your circuit from unwanted uh, signals. So normally a capacitor type of thing will be employed here in surge protective circuit to block any transients. And next an LP filter so LP filter removes any unwanted harmonics in the system. So whatever the analog signal which you have captured here, you are protecting it and then you are processing it such that you are removing the harmonics and then it is passed through analog multiplexer. Once it is processed through here, now you do have an analog signal. Now this analog signal is now converted into digital signal. You will be using sample and pulse circuit. You know that sample and pulse circuit improves the efficiency. And next, this analog to digital converter. This is where your analog to digital conversion happens. And next, again, we will use a multiplexer, digital multiplexer. So these three, they come under conversion subsystem. Whereas these four, they come under signal conditioning subsystem. Now, once the data is converted into digital, and selected data is being processed. Now this is moved on to a processing system. We call it as digital processing subsystem. See, these are the components of digital processing subsystem. Okay. And next, uh, yeah. Now in this digital processing system, you can see that there are few. Uh, blocks here. This is a CPU where it is just like your computer. A central processing unit will be there. And next this is a memory. And this is data input and this is data output. Two sub blocks will be there where we do process the data. And this is again the digital data is again converted into analog data and then it is provided to your trip circuit to where you want to send that signal. Okay, now this memory is located at some remote location. So your data will be safer. Now, if you carefully see now, these three subsystems, one is a signal conditioning subsystem, the conversion subsystem, and the processing subsystem, these three are the major subsystems of your digital level. Moving ahead. We'll have a quick discussion on signal conditioning subsystem today. And in this one, the major components as we have already seen, the first one is a transducer, followed by the search protection circuit, followed by a low pass filter, followed by analog multiplexer. 
each of these components has a very particular application in your functioning of digital relay. Now, the first one, the transducers. You know the concept of transducers, right? In a digital relay, these are generally employed in order to reduce the high values of currents and voltages to lower levels. As already been said, that you'll be using CTs and PTs. These are all they do come under these transducers. So normally you have kilo amperes of current and kilo volts of voltage normally. The magnitudes it will be reduced to some 1 to 5 amperes of current and somewhere around 100 to 120 volts of voltage. So your high values of currents and voltage have been now reduced. Now this is generally done by CTs and PTs. Normally in electromechanical things, right? But whereas in digital relays, we will employ uh, what we call as auxiliary transducers. And we also employ mimic impedances. Why we do employ this? Nothing but these magnitudes are further reduced. Because a digital relay basically takes in low amount of currents and voltages for measurement. So these are further reduced using your auxiliary transducers or your mimic impedances. Now, uh, let's have a look at current transformers. Current transformers, you know that they reproduce a perfectly scaled down value. Normally an ideal CT basically it reduces so based upon its NP is to NS it will reduce a perfect scale down value but you know that nothing is ideal in nature so automatically what happens is the practical cities which do employ which you we employ normally they give us an error and the biggest problem why the error comes is nothing but because of the saturation of iron Normally, we do employ iron cores for low frequencies. Unless if the operating frequency range is very high, we don't employ uh, uh, air core transformers. For air core transformers, we do air core transformers are exclusively used for high frequency applications. So, normally for our power frequency applications, we do employ iron core for minimizing the magnetic losses. But the biggest problem with the iron core is that it gets saturated if the voltage is very high. So, normally the biggest problem with the CTs is that it happens with the saturation of iron core. So, when does it happen? Whenever there is a transient appearing in the system. Normally very high values of voltage which do result in high currents. So, or otherwise any short circuit which transients on short circuits. A short circuit will automatically result in huge value of current. So this huge value of current will develop huge magnetic field, which in turn saturates your core. And next is, when you do experience, most of the times we are supposed to measure that all this concept is basically for measuring of fault current. Now when a fault current appears, now if your core is going to get saturated, then automatically this will not serve the very purpose of your drill. So how much distortion of data will be there. So the degree of distortion and the time of occurrence of signal distortion it depends upon the total burden which is connected to your current transducers. So that's fine the overall burden is normally adjusted such that the distortion and current signal is very minimal. Otherwise what happens is the relay software is to be modified such that even though burden is there you need to get a minimum distortion in the output of your uh, transducer which means that the data of current which you are recording it must be good enough such that it will replicate the exact performance of the system.